The concept of oil on troubled waters may seem like a strange expression, but its meaning of calming a tense situation is well understood. The origins of this phrase, though, have a much more literal explanation. It's true that even the roughest waves can be subdued by simple oil. Just like you dress your salad with oil to make it nicer, you can dress the sea to make it calmer. At the end of the 19th century, captains from various ships shared their experiences of using oil to calm rough waves in letters to the New York Times. One of those captains, Olsen of the Norwegian bark Wilhelmine, detailed what he did to save his crew and ship during violent storms. Despite the challenges they faced, the oil trick proved to be a game changer, drying up the weather side of the deck and helping them navigate through heavy gales. His words hinted at a secret power hidden within these simple bags made of sailcloth filled with irregular animal oil. He used it several times, and each time, the technique worked like a charm. One time, his crew encountered heavy gales on their voyage to Belfast. They were causing quite a stir, but they managed to stay ahead of the game by deploying these bags made of sailcloth filled with animal oil. As soon as they released the bag from the cat head, the weather side of the deck dried up in no time, even as the seas continued to wash over it. It was pretty neat to see it working its magic without even needing to check if the bag was empty, as it was a real lifesaver. Their vessel was still a little shaky and taking on water on the lee side, but this little trick really helped them out. Captain Jenkins from the British steamer Francisco used a similar method to calm the seas during their voyage from Hull, England to Boston. They ran into some strong westerly gales, causing really big waves. They didn't want to head any further north, so they decided to stop the engines and chill for a bit. They stuffed some oakum into the pipes of the closets and filled them with oil, and it worked like magic. The sea calmed down along the side of the ship, the big waves disappeared, and they stayed nice and dry. In total, 12 masters shared their success stories of using oil against rough waves, with only one reporting that it didn't work as expected. The use of storm oil, as sailors called it, was a tried and true method of preserving crew, cargo, and livestock from the harsh sea conditions. The toughest thing some of them experienced was just a little spray. Their methods were a tad different, but all of them used oil. But what made this storm oil so effective? First off, let's clarify something. Storm oil is not your average supermarket olive oil. To be truly effective, storm oil must be made of that thick, next-to-water insoluble consistency. Technically, it acts like a surfactant. This practice is very old and has been used for many centuries. Since ancient times, people have poured oil to calm ocean waves. It was poured onto the ocean surface to reduce wave intensity making it easier for sea rescuers and navigation. This spilled oil accumulates on the surface and creates a concentration gradient that leads to extra dissipation and damping as waves move. In the past, steamships and lifeboats from various countries were required to carry storm oil as this practice continued until the late 20th century. It was included in the United States Maritime Service Training Manual as essential equipment for lifeboats and British vessels were mandated to have it until 1998. Often, vegetable oil or fish oil was used as a cost-effective option. While those options were commonly used as storm oil substitutes, the thick consistency was the key to the oil's effectiveness. Storm oil has a dampening effect on water, absorbing some energy from the waves. It quickly forms a thin layer over a large area of the water surface, preventing wind from creating waves easily. The use of oil to calm ocean waves dates back to ancient times, with Aristotle and Pliny the Elder discussing its effects. Benjamin Franklin famously studied the calming properties of oil on waves during his trips to England in the 18th century. Communication between Franklin, William Brownrigg, and Sir John Pringle led to further exploration of this phenomenon. Agnes Pockles also made significant contributions to the study of storm oils through her experiments in Germany. She suggested that the calming effect of oil on water involved more than just reducing surface tension. Oil is definitely a game changer when it comes to calming rough seas. But it's not just any oil that does the trick. 
you gotta use the right kind of oil and apply it the right way. Forget engine oil and other petroleum products, they won't do much. Fish oils are where it's at, especially the thick ones. The problem is, modern ships and boats don't really carry fish oils, so folks end up using engine oils and bunker oils instead. Not surprising that they don't see the calming effects they were hoping for. Back in the day, the Coast Guard used to carry a little tank of oil for rescue missions in choppy waters, but they stopped that practice ages ago. You can't just pour the oil on the water, you gotta let it leak out gradually, drop by drop. The best way is to hang a bag of cod liver oil or something like that over the side of the boat. The oil seeps out through the bag onto the water surface and smooths out the waves. Not only does the oil calm things down, but it also stops the wind from messing with the surface. Just a bit of the right oil, like a gallon or so, can flatten out a huge area around the boat. Believe it or not, tossing oil into the sea used to be allowed. Steamships and lifeboats were actually required to have equipment to slowly release oil during storms. The lifeboats on the Titanic fell under British law from 1894, which said they had to carry oil for bad weather. Now for the science part, as oil decreases water's surface tension, preventing those pesky waves from breaking. It's like adding an invisible layer over the water that makes it super smooth. So when you pour some oil into water, the molecules don't clump up as they spread out to form a super thin layer. These oil molecules kind of do a somersault, standing on their heads and aligning with the water molecules like magnets. This creates a film on the water surface that is just one molecule thick. You can actually figure out the size of a single oil molecule by trying this out. For instance, one tester used a spoon that was under half an inch high, and the oil spot it spread out on the water was massive. If you do the math, you'll see that one molecule is incredibly tiny. Usually, wind creates waves by moving the surface of the water, but a layer of oil molecules acts as a barrier stopping the wind from making waves and just pushing the oil around instead. This pretty cool trick has been used by all sorts of people throughout history for different reasons. I've already mentioned that Benjamin Franklin studied this phenomenon a lot, but he also liked to prank people by using this science. He would claim he could calm a choppy lake with just the touch of his cane. Turns out, he had a little vial of oil in the bottom of his cane that he could tap out onto the water surface. It made him look like some sort of magician or water-bending master. By the way, the science behind this trick is still used today. By putting a thin film of oil or smaller molecules like magnesium fluoride on glass, you can create invisible glass that reduces glare and reflection. This type of glass is used in smartphones, tablets, laptops, and glasses. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.